Good morning, what's happening, what's going on? What is up? It's moving day. Uh, we have everything packed into the car, minus these two bags and my parabolic reflector off of my mono light, my LED light. Yeah, all that's left to do now is drive for about an hour across the city and move in, I guess. So yeah, exciting. Uh, niche, niche living down there. But it's down in one. Oh, me and Christine are just in Starbucks getting fuel for the road. Um, this is by far the greatest thing that Starbucks offer on that employer menu. And I'll die on that hill. No, just that hat. This one closest to us. Oh, God, fucked it up. Just completing the fitness and health and safety induction video and questionnaire so then I can access the gym here in the building. I um, don't think you're quite level. Uh, there we are. But yeah, I've moved into the apartment. Obviously, everything is everywhere. I have not actually unpacked yet. Uh, first things first is we did pop to the shop to get a few absolute necessities like uh, cereal, my porridge, a few bananas, milk, tea bags, um, shower gels, any of that sort of uh, you know fun stuff. Anyways I'll finish this brewski, finish this and then get started on the room. pretty much completely finished unpacking and putting everything where it needs to be. Uh, just a bit of rubbish to go away now. Um, before I go into town to record the Manchester United podcast with Al. Um, so, quick shower, get dressed, um, go me Al. Okay, let's get a shower. Send, 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 send. What will we go for? OSL. What else do we need? Deodorant. Hairbrush. Toothbrush. Toothpaste. Moisturizer.
so just heading for the train into the city to to record the podcast and um, yeah I haven't eaten today other than a banana and that Starbucks that you saw earlier on so need to try grab something small on the way to the studio and then probably something substantial afterwards so we'll see how we get on yeah still i don't i just i, I just cannot come down being your own players so no, i just i just cannot do it that's it you never get to see this guy like you know what i mean you never get to see that team play and i know it wasn't the, the fourth team but like you never get to see them play here who was captain yesterday Okay, so just back from the day, it's like 11 o'clock at night, but I did throw a Q&A box up on my Instagram story um, for those questions to be answered here on the vlog, so let's get into that now. First question, could you describe what scent you're wearing? Spicy, woody, earthy, some of those are not available in the US. Um, yeah, I can do. Um, in the videos, maybe instead of name dropping the actual brand and name of the bottle, I'll just describe what it smells like. Um, and I'll, I always tag the brands in the videos anyways, so maybe that's an option. Who's your favorite F1 driver? Fernando Alonso. What is your favorite brand? I don't really have a favorite brand. Thomas Farthing are probably high up there. Kip Lake, high up there. Um, friends of mine own brands like Scarvo or Pure Oigo. So um, yeah, there's probably too many to, to name. And um, obviously there's brands like TBD, um, whose glasses I wear pretty much exclusively. Uh, so yeah, probably those. What was your favorite beer? I don't drink beer. Um, I'm a rum and coke kind of guy. I pretty much never ever drink beer. How to wear jeans elegantly. I have four pairs and I just don't know how to use it. So for me, I think if you avoid like skinny jeans and wear something that has a much more of a straighter leg, um, go to an alterations place, a seamstress, a tailor, or whatever it is, get them hemmed so they fit you really well. And if the rise of the jeans are a little bit higher, they'll also look more elegant that way. What happened to moving to Italy? Um, I moved to Italy. I was there for like four months um, and I moved back for both family and work. Are you dating Orla? Um, let's move on. Uh, top essentials. Um, a good navy suit, a good pair of brown shoes, dark brown shoes, a good pair of black shoes. A good overcoat. Um, yeah, everything else after that, that's like an actual core, like just like core pieces uh, that you can start to dress up and start to dress down. Like if you've got like a really good high quality navy suit, you can wear a white shirt, a blue shirt, a pink shirt, a lilac shirt, yellow stripes, whatever you want. Um, you can wear it with a toy, you can wear it as a three piece, you can stick a grey waistcoat underneath it so it's kind of contrasted. Um, you can wear the blazer on its own, you can wear the trousers on their own, wear it with a roll neck, uh, take the waistcoat out and wear it with a piece of knitwear, polo t-shirts, anything like that. Uh, swap the, the brown or the black shoes out for a pair of plain white tennis shoes, whatever it is. It's really easy to dress it up and dress it down. And a high quality coat goes a long, long way. Have you ever been to Hoth? They spelled Hoth incorrectly, but that's okay, because they're not Irish. Um, we went there when we visited Dublin. It's a great place. Yes, I've been to Hoth many, many times. I'm a wedding guest and want to wear a pair of suede camel Chelsea boots. Any tips? Um, you're a wedding guest, so unless the invite states an actual dress code, like black toy or anything like that, generally weddings nowadays are like smart casual um, so I would probably go like a nice straight legged khaki and then a nice sports coat like an Oxford button down short um, or depending on your climate 
you're wearing Chelsea boots, so I'd imagine it's a little bit of a colder climate. You could even wear like a roll neck. Um, if you could imagine, so they're like, what color did you say? Camel Chelsea boots. So you could go with like a straight legged pair of khakis and then like a burgundy roll neck and then like a moss green tweed jacket with a bit of a burgundy check going through it. Something like that would all look really, really well together. Um, what is your favorite Italian food? Pizza. What's your favorite place in Ireland? Donegal. What is your workout routine? There's a gym in this building, so I'll do workout content soon. Favorite film, The Godfather part one and two. Biggest fear, getting sick. Like getting like seriously sick that it impacts like not only my life, but like my family's life and everything like that. So getting, getting sick. Favorite tattoo, I don't think I have one. Uh, it's got to the stage now that we're, a lot of them were done by really close friends, so a lot of them like mean things to me and um, even if the tattoo itself has no meaning and um, it means something to me because of the person that did it um, I really like the dagger um, I really like the leaf uh, of, of tons I have a tattoo tour video on the on the channel and um, if you want to go watch it I need to do an updated one because there's more since then when did you start dressing smart? Uh, was there a specific moment in your life? I think when, like growing up Catholic, in a Catholic country like Ireland, um, you make your first Holy Communion, and that was the first time I ever had like a made to measure suit, like something that fit me the way it should fit me. And um, I think that was when the seed was planted. And it wasn't until like my early 20s that I, start to build the confidence to be able to dress different than the way other 20 something year olds here in Ireland were dressing. Um, so I'd say my early 20s and then from there it just progressed. Best clothing shops to go when you visit Dublin. I love your style. The best clothing shops to visit in Dublin if you're looking for my particular style is none of them. Uh, Massimo Dewey maybe and even then it's a stretch you will not find my style of clothing in any dublin store you just won't um i shop almost exclusively online what is one thing that shocked you about becoming a full-time influencer um nothing really because i was doing the influencer thing oh they use content creator but it's the same thing i guess um i've been doing the influencing thing for like eight years so it took me eight years to go from like zero followers to like fifteen thousand followers and then took me eight months to go from 15,000 followers to 40,000 followers. And then took me 90 days to go from 40,000 followers to 1.2 million followers. And that's on Instagram. It took me almost two years to hit 1.1 million followers on TikTok. So I've been doing the influencer thing for a long time. I've worked with different brands like for a very long time. Even when I had like low numbers, I've worked with tailors like Louis Copeland, who was like a very esteemed tailor here in Dublin. I've worked with Canada Goose, I've worked with Nokia, um, I've worked with Jemison, I've worked with Bushmills, I've worked with Powers Whiskey. Um, you know, I've, like, I've worked with a lot of brands. Um, so I kind of know what to expect. Um, but what I did not expect was how disrespectful might be like a like a tough word like it might sound a bit harsh but like i would never ever consider um like i worked in marketing i worked in marketing for a cosmetics company before going full-time i would never message somebody with over a million followers and ask them to do something for free or ask them to do something for a ridiculously low fee like it's that is one thing that really shocked me is how people ignore the audience that I've built and like I'm so privileged and I'm so lucky to have built the audience that I have and the following that I have they're so engaged they're so loyal they're genuinely interested in what I do what I have to say they genuinely support me wholeheartedly and I'm so so lucky to have that, to have built that. And for certain brands or certain PRs to 
like <laughs> completely disregard that and essentially want things for free is absolutely crazy like it's disgustingly crazy um but all the other aspects like not being paid on time all that sort of stuff um i was well used to that what advice would you give for styling rings sunglasses with an outfit and affordable favorites um so obviously like you can get affordable i think jewelry when you go like affordable generally it's just cheap it's gonna tarnish and it's gonna look bad um so i wouldn't skimp on that if you have your own particular pieces i would wait and invest um and the same kind of goes for glasses like me i wear glasses pretty much all day every day i sometimes wear prescription glasses uh, sometimes if the television is you know a little bit smaller or if it's a little bit further away and um, sometimes i'll draw prescription glasses on but i pretty much exclusively wear um a tinted so they're like not polarized they're not super black like for example um these two pairs of glasses are the same frame shape they're both the cord from tbd eyewear these are polarized sunglasses they're black lenses you cannot see my eyes these are tinted glasses um they're not polarized and you can absolutely see my eyes you can see i'm looking at the screen now i'm looking at the lens now i'm looking at the screen now i'm looking at the lens and um, so i pretty much exclusively wear a tinted lens all day every day that's why like you can see that the frames are, are dirty because like draw my face i take them off my face i'm pushing them on my face like this my fingertips are all over the lenses because i wear them all day every day and if you are wearing glasses all day every day i would suggest also investing in good glasses like tbd i wear ones are i've had ray-bans i spent 275 euros on a pair of ray-bans these glasses are far far superior and cost less um, I'll leave a code on the screen. It's Damien Ten. If you do want to buy a pair of TBD glasses, they are handmade in Italy. Uh, even the hinges are handmade. Um, these ones are sustainable as well, sustainably handmade in Italy. Uh, so you're not only getting a high quality pair of glasses, these are also like supporting true craftsmanship. Um, so. This is not an ad, they don't pay me. Obviously that link is an affiliate link, but it, I'm genuinely, anybody that follows me on Instagram or TikTok know that I swear boy TBD glasses. Um, I was a customer before um, I worked with them on any sort of affiliate uh, program. So um, I genuinely stand by that brand. As I said, I was a customer first. Um, thought, thoughts on incorporating visible tattoos into an overall style um, for me like my tattoos just gradually became more visible like as I worked from my arms down onto my hands and then from my chest up onto my neck generally they'll eventually just become part of who you are like I think if, I, if my tattoos were gone tomorrow people probably wouldn't recognise me um, and even the people that see me daily don't really see the tattoos the same if you know what i mean they kind of just melt away and they become part of who you are um so i don't think there's much kind of thought on how to incorporate it you just you just treat it like it's your skin it's on your skin you can't change it so once it's there it's there uh do you still have your apartment in italy i was renting the apartment in italy so i essentially just didn't renew the lease when i was coming home uh what's the end goal in your tattoos full body covered not full body so i won't be doing any more of the middle of the face it's very very tempting to do under this eye. i have three dots under this one it's very very tempting to do under this one but i'm convincing myself it's a bad idea so nothing nothing more in the middle excuse me um in a couple of weeks um i have a session booked in to finish out my right arm so my friend lucas we're doing a full japanese rework on this arm i think i have one small little gap two small little gaps left on this arm this is basically now a full patchwork sleeve of one small little gap on my elbow and a small gap on the inner bicep here and then this arm is basically finished and um, i have two gaps on my stomach that i want to fill 
Um, and then my other friend Lucas, we have our back piece planned. So that's basically, oh, and then in October, these gaps here on my neck uh, are being filled um, by um, Sergi, who done this filigree. Uh, we're just gonna add more here and a little bit under the chin. So a little bit here and a little bit here. So then the neck looks a bit more kind of full. Um, and then after that, then it's just a few small patches on the legs and then I'm basically done. Um, so full body to an extent, but not like, it'll be more kind of patchworky as opposed to like a body suit, if that makes sense. What advice would you give someone trying to start marketing themselves better on social media? Um, be authentic and be consistent. Um, there's enough highlight reels on the internet. I think one of the reasons why I've been so successful on the likes of Instagram and TikTok is because I was just unapologetically me. I didn't really give a flying fuck. Um, if people give me shit, I get them shit back. Uh, I didn't try please everybody. Like, um, don't get me wrong, I listen to my audience quite a lot and I engage in the comments a lot. I get messages from people all the time. Like, borderline questioning how I respond to so many comments. I basically respond to every single comment that I get. And trust me, I get a lot. Um, but I make the time to do that. I treat social media like it's a job. It's There's a social aspect to social media. Um, I think the reason why I've built the audience that I have and the reason they're so engaged is because I'm engaged with them. Uh, it is a back and forth. It's a two-way street. I don't just post and bounce. I post, I stick around, I respond to the comments, I engage with people back and forth. If they DM me, they get an answer, they get a response, I'll do the best that I can. Um, I think that's the best way to just be yourself, try being, try bring something unique. Um, and it's perfectly acceptable to take inspiration from other creators, but try put your own spin on it. For example, I didn't create the Let's Get Dressed trend. People have been doing Let's Get Dressed videos on YouTube long before Instagram and TikTok were even a thing. The only difference is it went from this format to this format. But with the clicks and the claps and the ASMR aspect to it, and even the ASMR aspect to the videos wasn't actually intentional. It's just because like I'm a real stickler for quality and I wanted the sound quality to be really good. And then when people were commenting about certain things like a shoe tree or the sound of the sprays or the sound of the zipper, I was just leaning into it, into it because that's what the comments were about. So instead of just leaving the mic here, I'd cup it in my hand and I would like emphasize those sounds because that's what the audience were honing in on. So I was able to put my own spin on an existing format of content in the Let's Get Dressed videos. I was able to make a unique formula that suited me um, and that became synonymous to, to my brand. Like I'm known for that now. Um, so I think that's that's probably my advice. Favorite bands or musicians? So Bring Me The Horizon are my all time favorite band. I have pretty much followed them all the way from This Is What You Edge Your Seat Is Made For, the first ever EP, through Counter Blessings, all the way up to Post Human. Uh, I've seen them live a couple of times. Um, I'll be seeing them live again in January of next year, um, by far. By far my favorite band. How often do you go shopping for clothes? Actually, not that often. Um, it's more for like special occasions now because I've kind of built a core wardrobe that I'm able to make a multitude of different outfits out of. So now it's just kind of like plotting little pieces in when and if I need them. So for example, the Barbie premiere, I didn't own anything pink. So I went and bought a pink tuxedo jacket. Um, I didn't need to buy the whole thing because obviously I already have custom made tuxedo so I just wore the tuxedo trousers and just bought the pink jacket. Um, it's getting really cold out now so I bought a new down jacket today. It's this one. My little brother works for Patagonia so I just went there, used his staff discount, got myself a down jacket because the weather started to turn and I wanted something that could um, easily fit under a suit jacket if I wanted to. If I didn't want to wear like a big long kind of dressy trench coat, I could wear something like that. Um, and I do like the outdoors, I like on hiking, I like photography and everything else like that. So during the colder months when I'm like out doing active stuff, having a coat like that as opposed to like a big long trenchy coat, invaluable. So it's more like 
shopping for specific pieces rather than like, oh, I'm going shopping and I'm just buying lots of random bits. Uh, how did Let's Get Dressed come about? I kind of touched on that already. Like it was already a trend that was, it's been going around for like years and years and years. Um, it's some of the oldest content, um, like influencer content, so to speak, when like YouTube became like YouTubers, so to speak. Um, fashion YouTubers were doing Let's Get Dressed videos. Um, for me, like the fashion content that I was doing was like photos. So you'd go out to a nice location, take pretty photos of an outfit, and then you'd like write a full blog post about it, and then you'd post it on Instagram to try try drive Instagram traffic from Instagram to your blog, where they would read, you know, five hundred words on what you managed to write about an outfit. Um, then during lockdown, when like TikTok became a thing, um, that was just a natural evolution of the content because it was fashion content in you know still photography and then that evolves into video and then as as i said like the the formula in which my videos are done in terms of like the the clicks and the claps and then the trousers shirt add a belt maybe not add a belt uh, for our timepiece for our scent like that formula just kind of became a thing like over time um and then it was just refined from there Uh, why are you interested in old fashion? Um, so, like, I think men's fashion. I think men's were peaked in like the forties, uh, and then in the f in the fifties it was still good, and then from the sixties onwards, in my opinion, it kind of dipped. Um, I I just think the overall silhouettes um, were far far better, um, far more masculine looking. Um, the proportions were all much better uh, and I, I think it was just more elegant overall and I just loved how like every single man like every single one of them all dressed impeccably well uh, it was like a, a social thing it was like a society thing you didn't want to see you didn't want to be the one that was you know dressed badly um, so yeah that's I get a lot of inspiration from those eras why do you have so many tattoos because I like them uh, I like having them, I hate getting them, but like having them. Uh, what did you want to be when you were a kid? Uh, a footballer. I played football relatively competitively all the way up until um, my late teens, early 20s. Wasn't good enough to make it at a high level. Um, and then I stopped playing when I started to like get a job, like between going to college and then having a day job. Um, I didn't really have time to play. Uh, and then I went went coaching then in, in my later years and uh, I'm going to get back into coaching now that I'm back in Ireland. Um, favourite instrument and can you play? Um, my favourite instrument is probably probably the cello or the violin, the clarinet. I think they've got just beautiful tones to them. I think the piano is incredible because um, obviously you can you know, it can play two parts at once, but like, I mean, if someone's good enough at an instrument, they can play, you know, I've seen people play uh, multiple uh, parts on on the guitar at the same time. Uh, I can play the drums, but it's the only instrument that I can play. Uh, Norton or Triumph in regards to motorbikes? Um, I mean, I suppose that's like asking like between like, I don't know, Margot Robbie and Megan Fox. I mean, you just can't pick one. They're they're, they're just you can't pick one. You can't. I'm going to refuse to. Favorite form of coffee? Iced. Um did you enjoy staying in Italy? Absolutely. Um it was wonderful. It was probably the best four months of my life. Learned so much about myself. Um, so much about another culture um, so much about what I'm willing to accept from people um, in terms of like personal treatment it's a whole other story for a whole other day um, but the friends that I made there like the f family that I made there like Johnny, Luca, Daniele their partners um, like they're people that will like I will hold a dear, dear part in my heart for those people. They are literally my brothers and I cannot wait to see them again. Um, yeah. Uh, 
Okay, next question. What is an unpopular what is an unpopular opinion you have about fashion or high fashion? Um trends. Trends are designed to make you spend money. Uh the second you spend the money to obtain that trend, it changes. And then you have to spend money to get to the next one. And then you spend money to get to the next one. When if you just find your own personal style and refine that, then you'll spend less money. Um no one wants to be trendy. I think it's Carl Lagerfeld said that the second you become trendy, uh, it becomes tacky. So, uh, who are five people dead or alive that you would like to have dinner with? Um, Sir Alex Ferguson, Pep Guardiola, Nelson Mandela, my grandfather, and. Let's go, let's go James Dean. It's a weird mix for a dinner table. Playing a band? Technically, no. Uh, me and a few friends get together and we like jam a bit, cover a few songs. Uh, we don't write, any, we haven't written any of originals yet. Uh, whether, we, whether we release any music remains to be seen, but... Uh, I enjoy playing music. It's kind of like one of those private hobbies that I don't really share. Um, but yeah, love it. What movie have you seen the most times in your life? Probably Home Alone 1 or 2, The Godfather Part 1 or 2, uh, Back to the Future Part 1, 2 and 3. Um, probably any of those. Opinion on mullets, uh, as in the hairstyle. Um, I think they look cool on some people. They most certainly would not look cool on me. I don't think they're particularly elegant. Um, but then again, the people that are wearing them aren't trying to look elegant. So there is that. Um, yeah, as I said, I, I do think they look cool on some people. Uh, you just won't see me donning a mullet ever. What is the outfit of yours that you like the most? Um, I love wearing it. I love wearing a tuxedo. I love wearing a full tuxedo. Probably because you don't get to wear it that often. Um, love wearing a full tuxedo, but I also just love the. I'll actually pop. Um, I'll move over this side, and I'll pop a photo up here. Uh, this is me flying uh, first class to Kentucky, and this is the outfit that I was wearing. Um, and this is probably one of my favorite outfits that I put together and I put this together in similar combinations most times and um, it is a classic navy blazer gold buttons a classic grey flannel trouser pearl loafers blue short tie tie is optional you can have the short and just leave it open um, yeah the, the classic navy blazer and grey flannel trousers literally considered the gentleman's uniform um, it'll never ever go out of style it'll never ever miss it is an easy easy outfit that you can do over and over and over again and it'll always always look good on a side note i love pairing especially in the summer months um love pairing white trousers with like yeah uh, with brown i think white and brown or white and navy go together really really well um, I'll pop another picture up here uh, when I was at the Kentucky Derby and I'm wearing white linen trousers and a grey uh, puppy tooth um, linen and cotton blazer uh, from Todd Snyder um, loved this outfit uh, similar vibe to the one on the airplane but I'm not wearing a toy the collar's just open and then the white trousers give a bit more of a kind of summery vibe uh, yeah they're probably my favorite outfits to kind of put together just like that i'm going to end the vlog there and yeah i'm going to make myself a small little night late night snack i'm going to put something on the television there and get cozy on the couch there and i'll see you guys tomorrow remember to be nice to people be nice to yourself i love you guys goodbye